Off you go, Jones. Okay, so uh, he attempts to victory. The target audience for this will got to be uh, 18 to above, so it's a very adult audience, um, mainly for the concepts quite violent um, later on, and also a lot of the ideas explored uh, with inside the film and what people say is obviously uh, quite hard to understand, it's quite um, intellectual. So, obviously, our main focus here is basically just the above 18, and then in the woods wouldn't be because they obviously want to super much of action properties, which is. Uh, Okay, so the inspirations for this, um, there is various inspirations of it for this film. Um, from the film, from 1930s films of previous ones, and also in everyday daily activities such as religion and so forth. So to go on to the films, um, when looking at the research for going for you know previous sales and whatnot, um, it was very evident that lots of people agreed that the older 1930s actual gangster films made in the 1930s were the most successful. And the reason for that was that they focused more on the gangs and the members within to be more like family men, and, uh, and it was more a reflection of society. So the gangsters inside it were seen as more founders of society or you know, you know, the shapers of society rather than someone who's against it. Um, while pretty much all modern films in nowadays for gangsters is always demonizing, it's always demonizing the gangs. Uh, even in films like Public Enemy and so forth where the main character is still a gang member at the end. He's always shot down locally by the policeman and something like that. Um, so the audience are meant to hate the characters. So we looked at Scarface, uh, the original Scarface from the 1930s, and that was considered the best gangster film I mean, because it portrayed those ideas. So that was our main inspiration um, for the actual film itself. So we tried to shoot ours with the main character Marco and various other characters in that same style. So they have seen as, you know, like shaped society. Um, and one way to get to do that was obviously to look at how people function in themselves, so such as religion and religion and so forth. So we made the characters purposefully, you know, not stupid and not just about money, but you know, about people in general and religion itself. So the very title he tends a fig tree. Um, the fig tree comes from a biblical um, story uh, where Jesus well it's the only time where Jesus uses powers for destruction. So we thought it worked well for a uh, idea, a concept within the film as well. So when he tends the fig tree, it's sort of like the man who tends society. Um, so yeah, and then obviously the lighting of the room and so forth, we tried to display it. So at that very time, you see the guy's face a lot, it's dark and blackened out to portray that what he's speaking about is quite um, heavy stuff. Um, for the distribution, I can't say distribution side of things, um, we decided to have it in both cinemas, like the franchise view, and then later on in independent cinemas. Um, so in mid October, we'll probably release, release it in like the main cinemas, and then just before Halloween, so you've not got all the Halloween films on. And then after Christmas, so you've not got all the Christmas films on in independent cinemas, and uh, see if we can make some more money. Um, yeah. The, because it's a male based film, uh, we've had to do separate female advertising. Um, because obviously, most females are into a more, try not to be sexist, but like feminine side of things. Um, <laughs> so we've got a couple more posters here. We've got the uh, obviously female poster. Uh, a male poster, which is our poster we used. Um, the artist, which could be seen as both. Six the poster, and then the female. What the typical female do, by the way? Um, today, the live conference. Magazine articles. Like, is that Vogue? Yeah. <laughs> um, female viewers, like fashion, style, male torso. To, so we've actually done a separate poster for the female to try and get them enticed in, but obviously when they go to the cinema they might not enjoy it. But we've already paid the money. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, on that subject, so Ben doesn't mess that one up. But, uh, the character inside it, obviously you have Mark who's the main character, a lot of them is male based, but also um, another character who features quite heavily inside is uh, Annie. So she's more like the female lead role. So, 
What Ben's also trying to say there is that such as posters like the female posters, we tailor the posters to the characters. So for the female viewings, obviously Annie would be the main one to look at, and then for the males, one to be Martha and so forth. And uh, it's a bit like Game of Thrones in a way. I mean, that's a series, but in Game of Thrones, it sort of forces the audience to take a side and support someone. So it's like, oh, I support the North, I support some area, whatever. It's sort of the same idea, but turning it down to characters. So, on that. Uh, we sort of gone through that one as well. Yeah. So. <clears throat> right, um, so interviews are kind of just an additional way of promoting the film um, closer to the release, and so, because um, certain people use kind of certain uh, sites like Total Film, and so they can hear about all of these films being put out at the moment. But a lot of people um, they they don't, and so we want it to be heard um, just wider. So one way of doing that would be to have cast members talk about it on on radio, something like uh, BBC Two, for instance. Uh, and this would it would. Both, um, it would help the film in terms of it would promote it for other people to see, but also it would describe, they would describe what the film is about, so they know what genre they would be going to see. And then another way of doing this is magazines such as, for instance, the, uh, the article about the Great Gatsby, which is a, a very female magazine. Um, but then we can also do that for um, male magazines as well. Um, so we wanted to have um, an association with the cinemas that would mean that um, for, with every ticket purchased by someone, um, say one in every uh, 100 of those would win um, a beer or something. Um, and this, it's, it's age appropriate because we're looking for an adult uh, audience. And, um, with the uh, limits on drinking being uh, 18 and above as well. Um, so I'll just note that beer, the reason it's beer is because of that is actually the same beer featured on film, so it's sort of like, you know, a warm up film. And uh, I'll just put out there, uh, for a female audience, it would be like why I'm something like that. <laughs> 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 So going back to what I was saying about um, websites like Total Film, um, people will um, who are looking on what films to put out will, will see all of these, these lists. And we want to advertise um, free tickets uh, because the, uh, the websites um, can promote the films to um, the regular users. But also, because people will be getting free tickets and they can Chain it off and say, you know, I, I don't think you need one. I, you should come and see this with me. And um, so that helps. Okay, so the trailer. Um, as I was saying earlier about specific characters being on posters and so forth, um, for the trailer, we basically take the clip you're about to see without the film we made, it's basically the introduction to the film. Um, so we take parts from that introduction and put it into a short trailer. And the reason for that is because uh, the introduction of our film really sort of introduces the characters and shows their, you know, their, what they're like and that would be a great way to sort of draw people in more because of interest. So um, that's basically our aim for the trailer. It would be quite hard to um, to make a full trailer considering the film is about five minutes. So one idea would be that as well as having a kind of a shortened trailer, we could also have a, a TV spot closer to release, um, which is just it's a lot more simplistic and it's a lot uh, less time to consume as well. Right, so the time of release. Um, we were very keen on releasing this round about October because uh, the summer months, May, June, July, they um, are the times in a year when more kind of franchise movies come out, um, so superheroes, actors, all of those. And they earn a lot of money during uh, those months. And one noticeable thing is that um, the highest grossing movie uh, for an opening weekend in October is a lot less than it is um, for the movies around the summer, which means that there's more competition for money, because uh, which was gravity, and then the top 16 highest grossing films for 
summer or early fall that we would feel that we wouldn't be able to compete with the major franchise films. Um, and then we've predicted sales because we wanted to release this in both uh, major cinema venues and in independent cinemas. Um, the, the budget, if it was around 2000, then we would feel that we could get about uh, 4,500 in gross um, because we wanted to market this film as a historical genre, a historical uh, drama like Argo, um, because recent gangster films have been known to uh, not get a profit over their, um, their budget. So for instance, um, Gangster Squads was a, had a budget of um, 60 million, and it overall earned 45 million. Um, so we felt that, you know, marketing as a historical drama would be a lot safer. Yeah. Um, and then the earnings from the uh, independent cinemas would be similar to the open weekend of the main cinema because they would be they, they usually stay in um, an independent cinema for about two weeks, um, whereas a main cinema kind of maybe a month or two. So. We would be looking at, you know, kind of tightening that by about three or four and saying that that's what we would get additionally on top of what we'd already earned from the main cinemas. Um, so, yeah, basically, that's still and we'll check that. Um, just for reference, because of it's very dark and that thing, to show the real colours on here, but so if you ever can't see anything, it's just black black and white. The glad of Marty Lanty's rain too. The glad of all the woman making food of you. Hey, Marco, I've got a little boxes for you. Do you want to talk to Slick Tony? Hey, come on. The imitators of me. Every man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonors his head. Corinthians, loving four. Your heart. Oh, yeah, of course. I didn't mean to offend you. But Marco, I've got to talk to you about these boxes. Yeah. You said to take a hand. Yeah, but. I don't have any money to put in. Jess is only money to put in. As are you. Jess! You say so, but that's one block of quite good with this game. Jess, what are I have to say, Marco, I never saw you as a gambling man myself. So. No, I see you here with all these casinos and thinking all gambling is a sin. Then how do you all know that? I mean, what did you do before all this, eh, Marco? I'm not a Christian. Oh, yeah. Have you seen the circus? I remember watching the Ringling Brothers so many years ago. Are you good? Yes. Very good. In fact, I still remember fresh in my mind. The performance taught me something very profound about the ways to control people. <laughs> it wasn't a magic box trick with a saw at home. Magic box trick. You know, a, a man locks another man in a box and puts it in two, you know, it's, it's a trick. See, the first thing about the circus is they're surrounded by clowns. Full grown men covering their faces with makeup to try to impress others. Turns out you no longer have to find a circus to see one of those. You really think I'll risk coming in here without nothing to fall back on? You can't touch me. 
I've taken all this shit all over your life, son. You have nothing. You do not scare me. She might as well continue this little game. Because I won't mind making some money while I'm here. Why don't I scare you, Tony? Oh, don't worry about the game. It will come to you. I'm in no rush. So please, go on. Well, let's just say I hold a jack of diamonds. Knows about your sister's whereabouts. Sure, he doesn't have a face. But we know she's living there. Alone. Kind of narrows down the search. In fact, She'd be there right now, ready to tear her up. You know, the second thing about circuses is the audience. As soon as you give them a game to watch, it keeps them busy, draws them in. People barely notice what's happening around them. <laughs> Makes them feel uncomfortable watching other people more foolish than them. And it just so happens that I hold a ten of clubs. But what your ten of clubs gonna do? On its own, it may not be as good. But if you're clever with it, <coughs> and your man is on his rest this morning, it's at your last place. Probably up right now. <coughs> and to answer your question, uh, I used to be a butcher. No one teaches you a lot of people in general. They say that. Pig is not much different from a man. In many countries, the word for man translates to long pig. And in butchery, the cuts you deal to a pig are the same used to work the joints on a man. Rather like, what do you call it? The magic box trick. Oh yeah, so basically, yeah, basically it was we did make it set in America, so Tony had the American accent, but we decided that in so many things, uh, the bad guy is always like, you know, British, and that sort of has some sort of value to it, um, so we decided that would be wicked if Marco was more like British, as, you know, as his henchman as well, um, so yeah, that's the other point. There was a strong um, Irish culture in um, America around the 20s and 30s as well, so we, we, we didn't want everyone to be kind of uh, Once you say, like, yeah, yeah, trading, yeah. you know, many people coming to the country, it's not just America now, it's like, you know, uh, yeah. So, uh, why did you decide against doing it with Italian characters, like most kind of classic uh, game films? Is it with the story characters as well? Oh, uh, with Italian. 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 Oh, um, because I think it holds so much, like, there's too much around it already, you know what I mean? If you're still an Italian character, everyone's seen so many films of that before. That uh, he wouldn't sort of take away what this is about and make it more, you know, people would attach, you know, like, oh, well, I've seen this character like this, and without unconsciously knowing it, you'll make the connection and link. So you might just treat them all the same way rather than thinking about the individual piece itself. So uh, that's why I work better not being Italian American. Yeah. Um, so, what was the first thing you did when you went to Italy? Um, one thing I've, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not being criticized, honestly. One thing I would have changed potentially is the choking noise. I feel it, it, it. I feel it. It's a little kind of. It could be different for the thing. Maybe that's the only thing I changed. Honestly, it's really good. I was going to say is it's. There we go. No, sorry. I really, I really like what you did with the title. You know, emphasizing the T, like bringing across two words. Well, where was your inspiration for that? Uh, well, like a fig tree. So the T looks like a tree. And then the uh, two words come from it, because if you have too many T's, it might be you know, but but crap. So. <laughs> How far in advance did you give them the uh, the script? Because that sounds 
really, really well rehearsed. Oh, uh, yeah, we get it quite hard, quite far in advance. But, uh, but in terms of the acts, we had a couple pull out last minute. And I mean, if you actually look at that properly, there's a lot of continuity problems. And the reason for that is because the cast and crew kept swapping in. Um, and then uh, you had to leave early. So, GFP is not even Yeah. But hopefully, the fact that it's not that's very obvious. We also left um, the clapper bar in quite a few shots. Oh, yeah, I think that's yeah, that's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, the rehearsing the script, because of uh, the, the conversations going on between the two main characters, we were able to just uh, film one of them, and then they would be looking across the other person holding the script so they could. Yeah. You know, it would be a lot um, smoother for them. Who wrote the script? So that the actual dialogue and the, the, what they were actually talking about was it was almost like a Tarantino sketch, like it was so like in depth and so clever and so intricate. It was that was easily what I did like really, yeah. <laughs> it was really it was good, I really enjoyed it, it was really interesting. With regards to the lighting, like um, did you just set it up and then do the scene? Like, because uh, I know it's like, yeah. sometimes it's a little bit different on the uh on the characters yeah. on this way. Yeah. But basically yeah. Yeah, the reason behind that is because we set up, we, we did a test run beforehand, you know, setting up the light to know what it looked like on the day. Um, and we only had like one main tungsten light, which was going over all of them. And that was fine with filming, but then it made it really dark. And we had to put up the uh, ice cream crazy. Um, so when we were going through the edit, some of the people were so, like, you couldn't see them at all. We had to wash out the color in a way to somehow, you know, bring it out white so you could still see their face. Um, and that sort of made the light look odd in places, like particularly after he mentions he's not Christian and he's drank a drink, after those two there's a couple of those which are a lot different colours than the other ones. Uh, yeah. Occasionally in professional dramas, the DP and a director will establish an f-stop at the start of the production and everything will be shot around that f-stop, that doesn't change, it's the same all the time and then the scene is lit around that f-stop. And it's just one way of knowing that your exposure is going to be consistent the whole way through. But when our lights are as, as limited as they are, that's that's a very difficult technique to kind of work around. I suppose with films like this one as well, it relies so heavily on light that if you were to do it professionally, you'd have, you'd have some sort of light manner so you could do it for like two, three years. Cause it, I mean, it relies so much on light. 50 years. 50 years. It's, 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 it's the grand wisdom of light. It rules out also. Yeah. <laughs> when, did you, when did you come up with the original idea for the script? Um, right, well, originally, the Peter Tank picture was from another script I was doing, like, with regards to outside college, and the ideas behind it are all true, by the way. They're just true about one thing in another country. They are actually that's a translation from human, and they do a couple of the same thing. In regards to all that stuff, um, as the ideas behind that particular section, I had in another script, and I thought, well, for this one, how we can make the character really unique, but also interesting, not just a classic, you know, um, of looking for money, is if I just incorporate these ideas into this one, because it was, uh, because I knew so much on anyway, um, basically. Um, your main, like, one of your main marketing um, parts of the pitch was about the female demographic. Um, why did you choose to have the females without any, any speaking? Basically, because when we were looking at the tropes and so forth from genre, female characters often didn't actually speak, but also, and they weren't really incorporated in it a lot at all. Um, so obviously we wanted to, uh, obviously not, we didn't want to exclude female leads, you know, to make it wider once and it would be good to have a, you know, a female figure in it. So we had, we basically had a female, you know, Annie with it. But also, um, her character was supposed to portray someone who's dangerous and, uh, and you know, she scrambled with dangerous figure in the male world. Um, so, Making her not say anything in the way was better for a character because if you don't, you don't hear them speak, it, well, unconsciously on your mind, when you don't hear them speak, you don't know much about them, and therefore they're made more of a mystery and more dangerous in itself. Uh, so that's why the decision not to have any dialogue. Well, so it says she just let the actions. Well, at the start of the presentation, you mentioned the whole thing about the uh, femme fatale, saying that was a major sort of main theme. Um, yeah. I'll be honest, I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> <laughs> I think that was... That was yeah, I think it was it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're roughly the same genre. <laughs> <laughs> I can't forgive myself for that. That's genre racist. <laughs> okay, yeah. Any, yeah. anything else about gangsters? Yeah. 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 Yeah
Um, one question. Uh, if you had the opportunity, is there anything about the film you would change? Um, yeah. Um, the lighting. When we were editing, we had a lot of problems, like, because we did them all separately. And we always had, we always had the task of running as well with Archie. Like, we couldn't find ones to sync up with the, art, with the video. So in places it was just, like, silent. Yeah. And, and that's why, um, in, again, in professional terms, the job of the clapper loader, or these days the second camera assistant, is also to call out the scene and take number. So that whole kind of convention of um, 32 take 4, that's specifically so when you're doing the audio editing, you can hear, oh, 32 take 4, you match that up with the slate that you can see on the screen and you know exactly what you're doing. Okay. Right, good. I, I think that's good. Just um, briefly, um, we, it would have been good if we um, had a kind of a, a plan B date for filming because we only had the one possible date that we could film on. And then we, we got quite um, worried about uh, people not being here that we thought of. It was quite a struggle, but fortunately it did work. Out, but yeah. It, yeah, it would have been a real problem. I think it's, I think it's effective. Yeah, well done. Okay, horror.